Is this thing on? Are you ready, Matt? You're listening to Box Office Binge's with Matt Diaz and Ernesto Santos. Good evening, folks. We have a wonderful evening's entertainment lined up for you. We know each other. He's a friend from work. So now let's move over to our spoiler review, our first spoiler review of the week, which is Malcolm and Marie, Zendaya, John David Washington. Ernesto, your thoughts? Um, it was pretty good. I really liked the beginning of anything. And if anything, this movie showed me that I, I don't hate black and white movies like I did Mank. Because look, <laughs> you can have a black and white movie that has excellent sound quality. <laughs> and I can hear every fucking thing that's happening in the room. <laughs> um, I thought it was cool. Did you notice that little one shot they did in the beginning? The first thing playing? I wrote down. Yeah, that was the first, first thing, thing I wrote I down. You know, they were going back and forth almost like a neighbor watching in the window. Like just following them back and forth. As yeah. Going in that room. It's, like, it's like a tracking shot from the outside yes. looking in. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was really – I thought there were a lot of things that are really cinem- – the cinematography, I would have to say, is like the peak for this film mm-hmm. more than anything. I thought the story was – I thought it was kind of – not necessarily strange. It's like just really sad. Like the whole movie is it's just like a roller coaster of emotions. Like you just really see the highs and lows of, of emotional abuse and – like how far and how bad it can be. Like when two people who really just don't need to be together, when they just find a way to stick it out, because literally you just see them one second. They're like happy and like making love. And the other, they're just like saying the most heinous, nastiest shit to each other. And it's like, and it's just like, like one's not better than the other. They're literally just as bad as each other. I mean, I guess more. I guess more or less. I I I enjoyed it, but I just I don't know. It was just kind of. It was very sad. It was a very sad film. You know, it's funny that you were mentioned like you know the like kind of like the roller coaster of emotions, them going back and forth. I almost felt like we needed like a, a little ding ding round two because <laughs> that <laughs> that's what it felt like for me, and that was like my a little bit of my frustration with the movie. I loved the opening of the movie Same. like the the arguments that they were having you know like you didn't thank me like what do you mean like oh you, you know i meant it and then like they they had like a really genuine conversation and they went as far <laughs> as <laughs> i loved the mac and cheese stuff yes that was that, the best part of the movie it was the Fucking best part angrily eating mac and cheese that's yeah talking shit to her. yeah he's like he's like he's like aggressively banging <laughs> his spoon <laughs> <on>. <laughs> Clank, 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 clank. He was like, you know, when it's hot and you're like, you're like, <sighs> he's doing like that thing as he's like talking about, like talking shit to her. Yeah. That for the mac and cheese, that I mean, she was right. She's like, she was. She's like, you're literally yelling at me while eating the mac and cheese that I just fucking made you. <laughs> yes. He's like, you're. She's like, you're belittling me, and I just, you know, while you're eating the mac and cheese that I just made for you, and it was like, you're, you're not wrong. Like, you're not wrong. You're right. <laughs> and That's then weird. like yeah, and even like what happened afterward, which was kind of funny too, in my opinion. Um, I think there were like this is like I would say, I don't know, round three of the arguments, <laughs> if I had to put a guess on it. But the other scene where he was like, The LA Time just put out my first review, and he's like, Oh, there's a fucking paywall, and he's he's searching for his, his card. Oh, yeah. And she's like, You don't have <laughs> your phone. Yeah, she's like, You don't have your phone in your card. No, I don't trust my I don't trust yeah. that shit. <laughs> Where's my wallet? Where's my wallet? Oh, I got it, I got it, I got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's like, where'd you put my wallet? He's like, it's on the counter. And she's like, she's like, where's it? Where is it? He's like, oh no, I got it. Where was it? Don't worry about it. It's not important, Marie. <laughs> <It's> not a... <laughs> like those moments there really like made the movie human. Like it was like it was humanizing the situation. That like to me, I just started laughing when we just heard them have like an aggressive argument just moments before that. Um, but then where it like for me it just took like a turn where it felt like they were done 
fighting, you know, yes. like several times, I several that. times. And like, I feel like this is like a mute point in the movie. Now the music is going up. They're kind of just walking around the house. She's either smoking a cigarette or, uh, looking, you know, or like intensely just bathing or whatever the scene was that there was like their downtime. And then it looks like there was going to be a moment where either one of them was going to say, I'm sorry. And then have like a genuine conversation after that. But then either, Zendaya or John David Washington uh, comes out and just reignites the the argument again. A- and I think, that's... That, I think that was the point. I, th- I honestly think that that was the point. I think it I, was I think the point right. to just show like their cycle of abuse and how it and how it plays out. Like it, there is no there is no quick argument. There is no back, yeah. you know there is no let's fight about it and move on. It's let's fight about it. We're going to go our separate ways, and when we come see each other, because they're so addicted, it's almost like they're addicted to fighting. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you may be a clean addict, but now you've just picked up the new addiction, and that's this unhealthy relationship that you're in. <laughs> right, and like, and obviously what I did like about the movie was that like each person wasn't wrong of what they were saying, and they, were yeah, both, and yeah. they both brought up interesting points throughout their relationship of like how this movie got made like you're not the only inspiration um you know here are the reasons why i didn't think or well here's all the you know people in my life that was inspired by this character it wasn't just you and then she was like you know you listed all these people you think but you didn't thank me i was there for everything and they kind of went back and forth with that and like it was interesting to see that like the story kind of go in layers like it's like peeling layers of their relationship within an argument yeah um so so yeah i and and also the movie kind of shows up like a lot of bottled up emotions that really it it felt like that night just kind of all exploded well it was the premiere of the movie that i mean but everything that they were fighting about, there it was some way tied to the premiere and that night of them being there that night. It just everything that happened, it was just like the straw that broke the camel's back. It's yeah. him not thanking her. And then that just opened the floodgates floodgates to everything else that, you know, she was penting up. And you know, it's it is, you know, you bring up a good point because it's weird because they're both yelling at each other, but you're like when they speak, you're like, Wow, that yeah, like yeah, that is fucked up. Like, yeah, it is fucked up that he did that. And then he yeah. would say something say, yeah, yeah, that's fucked up that she did that too. It's like, yeah. man, you, you guys are both wrong, but you're also both right. <laughs> right. It's almost like – I feel like there were a lot of moments in the movie where I'm like, I think we can just go to bed right now, right? Like, can we yeah. just can we just call it a night? Like, it, you guys hours ago. <laughs> you guys are, like, in a good point right now, especially when – uh, they were talking about the white lady and the reviewer of the LA Times and like, you know, they were having this long winded conversation about how like her review was like, uh, what, what, how, how, how was it? It was like her review was like everything that like, he's like, this is not what my movie's about. It's not because I'm black and, the, and it was featured black characters and like, I'm a great black director. Can I just be a great director? I don't want to be compared to like the next Ryan Coogler or Spike Lee or Barry Jenkins. I just want to be the next great director. And the, he was like throwing in race in there. Um, and like, but the review was all about race, but he didn't want it to be about race. There was an interesting long winded, you know, dialogue a piece of dialogue there that it looks like they were both you know pleasantly going back and forth but then as soon as that's over we're back into this argument after they're done making out for like a scene or two yeah and, and so I, I go the, ahead the, the, no no go ahead i was just saying that those were, those were just weird transitions as that's all i was gonna say yeah i mean to me it was the ending was the weirdest like what, what part like did she leave him because she wasn't in the house but then was that her on the hill at the end, right? So yeah, I'm then... pretty sure. I, I think I think the ending was just them. Here's the next morning. This is just the the mute point of their their argument. I, I think they're still together at the end of this. I I guess I could see that. It's just like this is just the restart of our cycle of abuse. Like we're just waking up to another day of it. Right, and I I think that's that maybe that was the point. Um, but obviously there wasn't much, you know. It was just a couple having an argument. This movie was filmed during the pandemic. So, you know, obviously they had, and this is during the, you know, maybe not the height of it, but definitely around the middle of it yeah. all. And, um, and, and so like, you know, obviously the setting secluded two people only, uh, as your stars, you know, I mean, for what it's worth, it was pretty, it was pretty good. 
Yeah, uh, it was just two people with a black, right. you know, just black and white camera. And you had a lot of, you know, you had, a, you know, each, each, you know, Zendaya and John David Washington had a lot of, they had a lot of love work to do, a lot of dialogue. It was a very heavy script. Like there wasn't really a lot of moments of silence. No. Um, it was a lot of, a lot of dialogue, a lot of like emotions to get through. Um, well, since, you know, Ernesto, since you've seen the show, how does this compare to Euphoria since this is the creator? Um, ironically, I would say just the, the use of the, the cinematography, the, the, it seems like all the cinematography was used purposefully. Like everything, every shot had a purpose. And even at one point, at one point, I remember when they're talking on the couch and they actually talk about cinematography in the movie. They do, yeah. They're they're talking about it, and he's and then at that point, literally right after that happens, um, he's talking about it. But all we're seeing is Zendaya's reaction to what he's saying. Mm-hmm. And like I just why like why aren't we watching him? I just felt like it was just I felt like it was like hey, if you weren't paying attention to the cinematography, this is your friendly reminder to pay attention <laughs> because these people do a lot of hard work. <laughs> right, right. Um, I do feel like sometimes John David Washington was like over eccentric. Like, I feel like he was acting more than Zendaya was, but, like, maybe too much acting. Like, he was, like, over the top at, at See, certain scenes. I felt like that just played to his character because he was, like, a narcissist receiving on the most ultimate high that a narcissist, yeah. like, an egotistical narcissist could ever have. Right. So, like, you know, you just, you pump them for the juice and you just let them free. You know, everybody just got finished telling him what a genius he is and what great he's doing the filmmaking. It's like, he's walking on, like, cloud 19 right now <laughs> yeah yeah that's true um but yeah I, I think all in all like i i liked it i i wouldn't say that i loved it but i i think there was enough merit there to recommend people to watch it agreed yeah i i don't i don't see any reason why you know and, and some people could say it's slow nothing happened sure you could easily say that but I would have to I see with that person I would just say then you're just not paying attention. If you think right, that yeah. nothing happens in this movie, then maybe you just don't like dialogue movies. Maybe that's what right. it is. But as far as anything happening, like you have to listen to what they're talking about. Like if you're not listening, like literally you could probably listen to this movie as like an audiobook. You really could. You really don't need to see the the actions here at all. Like you can you make a really good point. This this could be like here's an audiobook. And called Malcolm and Marie, and we you can literally give all the sounds of what was in that movie and put it in an audiobook and say Malcolm and Marie have fun. And there might be a few there might be a few things like you know transitional wise or maybe uh, like walking wise. Every now and then it might seem a little off, but for the most part, like it's all just dialogue back and forth between the two characters. Yeah, I, I you know uh, uh, if you remember. When we had Kirk on the show, and he said there would be like some movies where he could like kind of just like listen to, or was it was it Kirk or was it Greg who says that they kind of like have Greg. like it was Greg that he didn't need yeah. to necessarily watch it that he can like kind of look over, kind of set the scene, and then listen to the rest of it for yeah. the most part. I feel like this is exactly that case. Yeah, you can easily like you know either put this in the background, you know you can even watch this movie while you're cooking dinner. And like you don't really need to see the action. It's it's more about the words that are going into into this movie. Agreed. Yeah. Um. So as far as like final thoughts, like I think I'm I'm very much in the same boat with you. So I like this movie, but I didn't necessarily love this movie. Yeah. But and maybe this is gonna be kind of like a, a strange transition. The reason for that is is because. This next movie that we're about to review, The Sound of Metal, was fucking incredible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's probably, hey, hands down, at least so far, one of the best movies I've seen of 2021. And I know we're going to get, we're kind of in a in a mid-transition between both films, but I really feel like maybe this movie to me was just overshadowed by Sound of Metal because I had watched Sound of Metal first. Oh, you watched Sound of Metal. Oh, see, I watched Sound of Metal. I watched Malcolm and Marie first and then Sound of Metal. See, I did it the other way around because I was like, oh, I said, I don't know. I feel like maybe I'll like Malcolm and Marie more. Maybe. Yeah. No, I was wrong. And either way, like, it would have been overshadowed because Sound of Metal was incredible. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I guess your final, I guess without comparing it to Sound of Metal, what are your final thoughts on Malcolm and Marie? Um, it was a great movie. It was a good movie. 
Um, I think the strongest thing about this movie, even though it's in black and white, is actually the cinematography. Mm. And actually, I would say I would say the 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 actual script because the dialogue was was like really on point. I mean, only to be paired by it with Zendaya and John David Washington. Um, but I don't know. I felt like I needed more. I felt like I needed a little bit more. Like I just I didn't feel a resolution at the end. It just felt like yeah. Okay, I just watched two people's like abuse cycle and. The resolution is that they're going to stay together and hopefully yeah. figure it out. <laughs> they're going to do it again. If you were to rate like between the performance, the dialogue, and the cinematography, between those three, what's your one, two, and three on that list? Damn it, Matt. <laughs> um, I'm going to go their performances, the cinematography, and then whatever the third one you said is. The, the dialogue, the, the script. Dialogue. Yeah. You see, I would say that the script is the strongest point, then the performance of the of that said script, and then then you know all together with the cinematography. Well, I guess because maybe when I think performance, I think I mean the performance is died. They're they're really tied to the dialogue, but I see yeah, that's true. But I see what you mean as far as like the delivery as opposed to the actual words on the script. Yeah, I think the words are important. There was one uh, thing in particular. Uh, I, actually, yeah, here we go. I wrote it down. She said. Once you know someone is there for you, and once you know that they love you, you never actually think of them again. It's not until you're about to lose someone is when you finally pay attention. I thought that was strong words and in, in, in either round two or three of her argument out of yeah. many of the rounds <laughs> of this whole movie. Um, but yeah, and that, that's a strong point to pull out there. And there are many moments like that throughout the throughout the film that I can like, I almost like I took away from it a little bit. It's like, oh, all right, you know, you have a point there. Um, but yeah, but as far as like getting a resolution, there's there's none of that. You don't yeah. you don't really get that. But so yeah, I liked it. It was it was a good movie, not a great movie. Um, definitely worth watching, but not worth revisiting. Agreed. Agreed. 100%. Yeah, there you go. All right. Uh, so there you go. There's our spoiler review on Malcolm and Marie, which is available to stream on Netflix. Hey, thanks for listening to this edited version of our weekly podcast, Box Office Bingers. If you want to hear the full version of all of our episodes, which includes us discussing entertainment news, movie and TV reviews, guest interviews, and other things we've been watching, you can find us on wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you want more from us, be sure to hit that subscribe button and find us on our social media channels on Instagram at box office underscore bingers, Facebook at box office bingers, email at box office bingers at gmail.com. And Matt, we're even on the ticky talkies. We're on the ticky talkies at box office bingers. Once again, thanks for listening.